In this video, we're going to look at the Poisson probability distribution, which is one of these discrete numeric probability distributions, where there's a random process, and the outcome is going to be counting up something. And what we're counting up in the Poisson kind of situation is how many things happen in a certain amount of time. And so what we could be modeling is that how many consumers arrive at a bank in an hour period, or how many cars go through an intersection during a 10 minute period, or how many snowflakes fall in a one square inch uh, area over an hour or 30 minutes, or how many accidents occur at an intersection during a month. All we have to know for the Poisson distribution is the average rate of occurrence. So given an average rate of occurrence, which we call mu, the average number of customers per hour over some you know, historic data, given that number, then we can calculate the probability that x number of events will occur over some specific unit of time. Now when we talk about the Poisson distribution, we assume that these things that are occurring, the people arriving at the bank, the accidents occurring at an intersection, are all independent. And so using the standard language of the Poisson distribution, we assume that these arrivals of accidents or people are independent of one another. So given the fact that one person walks through the door, that does not affect the probability of another person walking through the door, right? So people are arriving separately or the accidents are not occurring uh, due to another accident, for example. Now, whether that's a realistic assumption, you have to think about before you use this distribution. It could be that on a certain road, given that there is already an accident, it actually causes more accidents to occur. And we do see that. We do see that from time to time. Now. The example I want to work through here is uh, using some data that I collected on accidents at an intersection. So I collected some data on hundreds of intersections and their accident rates over time. So if we just look at one of those particular intersections, uh, I calculated that there were on average 2.78 accidents per month. So given that number, we might want to be able to calculate what is the probability that there are no accidents this month, or one accident, or 10, or 100,000. Now one of the properties of the Poisson distribution is that we can calculate the probability for any number x. We can put in 1, 0, 100, 1,000, a million, or a billion, as long as x is an integer. Uh, however, what will happen is the probability of, say, 100,000 accidents at this intersection is going to be so incredibly small that for practical purposes, uh, it's impossible. But you, will get, you can get a positive number out. It's just going to be uh, one in a trillion, for example. Now, you can calculate that yourself after we get done here, and you can see how terribly small it's going to be. Here's the formula that we use to calculate the probabilities for the Poisson distribution. f of x is just a function that tells us the probability of x number of accidents is equal to the mean, in this case 2.78, raised to the x power times e, which is the base of the natural logarithm, to the minus mu, so e raised to the negative the mean power, all over x factorial. And factorial is just the number times one less times one less until you get to one, except for there's a couple of special cases like zero and one. Uh, basically what x factorial calculates is how many different ways you can put something, uh, rearrange something into different orders. So Again, mu is this average, and that's the only thing we need to know to work this formula. Uh, another curious thing is that uh, for this Poisson distribution, whatever the number is for the mean, that is also the same as the variance for the distribution. So if you want to know the standard deviation, that's the square root of the mean. So that's kind of an interesting fact to know about the Poisson. Now, that's actually one thing you can check 
before you use the plus on to model data. Uh, one thing you can check to see, well, should I use the plus on to calculate these probabilities for this intersection, is to check to see, well, is the mean the same as the variance? Now, since I had data on this intersection and the mean was equal to 2.78, I can look at that same data and see what the sample variance is. Now, when we're talking about probability distributions, usually we assume that we're talking about the population mean and the population variance. Uh, here, for this particular intersection, over five years of data, uh, the variance was 2.51. So those two, the sample mean and the sample variance I got, they're not exactly equal, but they're pretty close. And so that does give you an indication that maybe the Poisson might be appropriate to use to calculate probabilities for this intersection. So how do you use it? Well, all you have to do is take that mean of 2.78 and plug it into the formula. And then if you wanted to calculate the probability that there are zero accidents, for example, plug in zero for x everywhere. So it's the mean to the x, and then the x goes on the bottom factorial. If you want to calculate the probability of one accident, plug it in everywhere you see for x, in the exponent and the factorial. And two, whoop, I need to edit this. In the exponent should be the two, and in the factorial should also be the two. So let me correct that. So let's calculate uh, the first two of these real quickly, just so that you can see how this is done. So uh, to calculate the probability of no accidents, we would just take the uh, 2.78 raised to the 0 power, which is 1, multiply that times e to the minus 2.78, which is about 0.062. And then we're going to divide that by 0 factorial. And 0 factorial is just 1. And the way I tell people to think about that is the factorial formula tells you how many ways you can put things in different orders. How many ways can you put nothing in different orders? Well, only one way. And that's not to do it at all. Now, that reasoning of mine might not work for you, but 0 factorial is just 1. So this formula just collapses to 0 0.062. Uh, this formula says that there would be about a 6.2% probability of having no accidents at this intersection. Now, to calculate the probability of one accident, we're going to have 2.78 to the first, which is 2.78, times e to the minus 2.78, which we see from up here is 0.062, divided by 1 factorial. But 1 factorial is also 1. How many ways can you put one item in different orders? Well, just one way. There's only one order. It's sitting by itself. And so here we get 2.78 times 0 0.062, which is 0.172, roughly. So there's about a 17.2% chance of 2 accidents at this intersection, sorry, one accident at this intersection, and now let's calculate the probability of two accidents at this intersection. It's going to be 2.78 squared times e to the minus 2.78, which is 0 0.062, divided by 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. How many ways can you put two things in order, the first one and the second one, or the second one and then the first one. So two ways to do that. So if we multiply that all out, we get about 23.958%, almost a 24% chance of having two accidents at this intersection. And so that's all there is to the Poisson. And once again, let me just stress that we could keep calculating probabilities here for three accidents, four accidents, five accidents, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you could keep going as long as you want since we can put in any number for x there. 
Now, as you compute more and more of these probabilities, the sum of the probabilities you've calculated are going to get closer and closer and closer to being 1. But you'll never quite get there uh, unless you round off to a certain number of decimal places. But you can get as close as you want to 1 as you keep calculating more and more uh, probabilities for more possibilities for how many accidents there are.